Range anxiety, or how far you can drive before you need to recharge, is probably the biggest thing holding back mainstream acceptance of electric cars. So far it's Tesla that's done the best job in Australia to counteract this, with a pretty extensive network of superchargers and destination chargers dotted all around Australia, and there's a lot more to come. They've also got the biggest batteries so far, and the Model X SUV is even rated to tow two and a quarter tonnes. So has the electric brand solved range anxiety and given us a car we can tow a caravan with? We're here to find out, and to put it all in context, we'll be doing the same test in a 200 series Land Cruiser diesel, which is arguably Australia's favourite tow vehicle. And if you're after more detail, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au, and if you're watching this on YouTube, hit like and subscribe to stay on top of all our latest videos. The Tesla we're using is a Model X SUV in the base long range spec, which used to be known as the 100D, so it's got the big 100 kilowatt hour battery system and dual motors that give it all wheel drive and total outputs of 386 kilowatts and 660 newton meters. With a zero to 100 performance claim of 4.9 seconds. Sounds good for towing. It also comes with a standard tow bar rated to 2.25 tons that folds under the bumper when not in use. It's a proper large SUV, but weighs more than most at just under two and a half tons because of that huge battery system but manages to pip the cruiser's payload by 10 kilos. The Model X long range carries an official driving range of 565 kilometers, or 17.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but we want to see how it goes when towing. Our Pallet Cleansing 200 series is a VX diesel, which sits second from the top of the Land Cruiser wagon range. It's got full-time four-wheel drive with a more rugged ladder chassis construction with a low range transfer case and solid rear axle and long travel suspension for serious off-roading. It's also got the now legendary twin turbo 4.5 litre V8 diesel which now produces 200 kilowatts and a very close to Tesla 600 newton meters. Toyota doesn't offer a 0 to 100 figure but it's fair to say it'll take about twice as long as the Tesla. The Cruiser also comes with a built-in tow bar but you've got to pay extra for the tonne and it's rated to the industry benchmark 3.5 tonnes in total. It's a bit shorter than the Tesla and rides on a shorter wheelbase, but its tall body and rugged all-steel construction make the Cruiser even heavier than the Model X, but can't match it for payload. The diesel Cruiser carries an official fuel figure of 9.5 litres per 100, and its total diesel capacity of 138 litres suggests a theoretical range of over 1,400 kilometres. We'll see how much this is affected when towing, and it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the Tesla. The other star of our show is the Avida Wave Tura electric pop-top caravan, which is built right here in Sydney. Seen here in 17 foot form, it represents a pretty common type of lighter van, and even though it's 1746 kilo weight, it's a fair bit under both tow ratings, it should still work both cars pretty hard over the hilly test route. Speaking of the route, the 162 kilometre first leg started at the Penrith Tesla destination charger with 100% charge and the cruiser tanks full and headed over the Great Dividing Range via the Great Western Highway to Bathurst. So a big climb followed by undulating highway across the top, a big decline down Mount Victoria and undulating highway onto Bathurst. We added the extra challenge of a lap of Australia's motorsport mecca, Mount Panorama, before heading into town to refill the cruiser and recharge the Tesla at the Bathurst Supercharger Station. We did this twice over two days to test each car with and without the van on the back. We'll take you through leg two in a minute. So this is the Bathurst Supercharger Station, which unlike every other supercharger station I've seen, is located in the middle of town down an alleyway, unlike all the other ones which are on the outskirts in a nice open car park. Nonetheless, we managed to get the van in here, but it's a bit dodgy blocking all the other charge bays. I can now give you the results of leg one of our test, with the Tesla showing just 12% remaining on the dash, compared with the 55% we saw yesterday with no van on the back. And this is telling me that it's gonna take an hour and 20 minutes to bring us back to 100%, which is pretty good. And also, given that I can monitor that on the app, it's time for lunch. In terms of energy consumed per 100 kilometres on the first leg of our test, the Tesla used 24.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres, without the van on the back, and 48.1 with, 
so it almost doubled its energy consumption. This also left us with just 12% charge, or 68 kilometres remaining on the dash, which made us a bit nervous about the return leak. The cruiser used 11.84 litres per 100 kilometres of diesel unladen, compared with the 19.1 litres per 100 with the van, which is just 61% more. So in relative terms, the Land Cruiser unsurprisingly fared better with 1.7 tonnes of caravan on the back. I was also able to refill the Land Cruiser within just 10 minutes at one of the numerous servos in town. But at that rate, we should have been able to comfortably cover another 567 kilometres without refuelling. Keep watching to see how we went on the way back to Sydney. Instead of going back to Penrith by the Great Western Highway again, we aim for a bit of variety by taking the 163 km route via the Bells line of road, so a bit more undulating than the first leg, which could give the Tesla's regenerative braking more of a chance to do its thing. Energy consumption is just one element in a tow car though, with stability, braking and acceleration being the most important details. The big cruiser is always a safe bet when it comes to towing heavy loads, but it's fair to say that its off-road ability, tall body and short wheelbase mean that it could be better, and the Tesla is a pretty good example of that. With all those batteries mounted nice and low, the Tesla is significantly more stable with 1.7 tonnes on the back than the Land Cruiser in all conditions. It's also helped by a longer wheelbase. The Tesla's airbag suspension is another surprise advantage, and while it can be a bit choppy around town over mud and bumps, and it all settles quicker than with the Land Cruiser, even with the caravan on the back. Tesla is famous for instant acceleration at any speed, and this effect remains when towing. The Land Cruiser's twin-turbo diesel V8 has long been a benchmark for tow vehicles, but the Model X makes it feel sluggish by comparison. You know how caravan vehicles are usually the slow ones up hills? This time, we were the ones doing the overtaking, even up the steep bends heading out of Lithgow. To overtake, it just takes the slightest flex of your right foot. Clearly there's a big caveat though when it comes to how much energy it's consuming while you're enjoying that performance, and it's deceptive because it doesn't make any more noise like a conventional engine when you're pushing it. You'd also think the weight of the van would overcome the engine braking effect of the regenerative brakes, but they're still very effective at conserving your actual brakes downhill and preventing the car from running away from you, and no doubt giving the batteries a bigger boost at the same time. This theory, plus our expectation that the Bell's line of road would be easier on energy, was supported by our Leg 2 consumption figures, with the Tesla moving from 17.9 to 38 kilowatt hours once the van was added, which was 27% better than the Leg 1 caravan figure. It was also a fair bit easier on the Land Cruiser, using 10.35 litres per 100 without the caravan and 17.22 with, with the latter representing an 11% improvement over Leg 1. Note how close both vehicles unladen Leg 2 figures are to their official claims of 17.7 kilowatt hours and 9.5 litres per 100 kilometres too. So if you're chasing economy, go the Bells line of road. But the most interesting outcome of Leg 2 is how the caravan made a bigger difference to each unladen figure than with Leg 1. Both may have used less energy on Leg 2, but we're taking it as a sign of how important a steady throttle is for minimising the efficiency compromise when towing. After nearly 700 kilometres of testing with both vehicles, it's fair to say the Tesla is a capable tow vehicle, but you'd want to keep it to relatively short distances and plan around your charging locations. Fuel and energy consumption will always depend on the driving conditions, which is why we chose different routes for each leg of our testing. Averaged across the two legs, towing the caravan with the Model X used 101% more energy than without, or halved its driving range, which sounds a bit scary. The Land Cruiser by comparison added 63%, which is still a big difference, but matters less in the real world when its big fuel tanks would still give you about 760 kilometres of driving range, which can be refilled really quickly at any servo. So you could do a weekend trip from Penrith with one supercharge, but it wouldn't have done it from Sydney City. Bottom line is, there's plenty of things like small camper trailers that are a lot lighter than this caravan that'll help the Tesla do the towing job much better right now. Compared to the Cruiser, the Tesla is a lesson in the benefits of a lower centre of gravity and road-focused handling. As always, bigger batteries and more recharge points would go some way to rectifying the Tesla's towing shortcomings, and I'm sure we'll get there eventually. 
But no matter what, the Tesla Model X Long Range's acceleration performance under load is simply excellent. And don't forget, if you want to read the full review, check it out on carsguide.com.au and hit like and subscribe to stay on top of all our latest videos.